Now then, the court is back in session. Mr. Luke at me, please take the stand. Well, well, how do you do, sir, lawyer? I never would have thought to see you acting so recklessly. I couldn't let them hand down your verdict just yet. Not when I would have given you your perfect alibi. An alibi by the name of Masty Mask. I'm sorry, I'm afraid to... I'm afraid even the great Luke at me has no idea what you mean. I would have been in the next courtroom ever since 10 o'clock this morning. I'm afraid there's no way I could know what's been going on in here. You've been in the defendant's seat all along, day, all day long, correct? Being tried as mask de mask. Indeed, it's true. It's truly child's play to fool the ignorant masses. Not only did the poor fools ask me to protect their valuables, they even gave me a generous reward upon returning their own property to them. Take this red diamond ring that sparkles upon my divine ringo from finger, for example. So you continue to insist that you are in fact mask de mask? Of course. Very well then, look at me. Let us begin with this simple question. On October 12th at 1 a.m., Cain Bullard was murdered. Where were you at that time? One without knowledge lacks even the knowledge that he should be ashamed of himself. But don't worry, I will not hold it against you, Sir Judge. Oh, thanks. Drink the coffee. All right, Mr. Atme. The night of the murder. Speak. We're listening. As you wish, Sir Prosecutor. The alibi. I was stealing the urn as Mask D Mask, just as I announced I would. I had more than enough time to prepare. It was a pathetically easy job. A, phot a phot photograph contains no words, but in this case, one turned out to be my witness. This time at which the camera captured Mask D Mask was the same time as my murder. As the murder, I mean. Sorry. Hmm, it seems the main point of discussion will be this point of the crime scene. Everything else up until now is all sort of the plan. There has to be a secret to this picture as well. Even the great Mask de Mask cannot be in two places at once. Now then, if you'll excuse me. I have a verdict to receive. Unfortunately, Miss Atme, you still have to do your cross-examination. A fool is too foolish to know that he is a fool. I think he's trying to say that you're full of it, Mr. Nick. And I think he's trying to quote Francisco. The only thing that's full of it is his alibi. I was stealing the urn as Mask de Mask, just as I announced I would. I had more than enough time to prepare. It was a pathetically easy job. A photograph contains no words, but in this case, one turned out to be my witness. The time at which the camera captured Mask de Mask was the same time as the murder. So this alibi is false? It has to be, or he couldn't have killed Mr. Bull out of the KB security. But I'm not really spotting anything unusual. There are two possibilities. Either the mask de mask in this photo is a fake, or the photo itself is. Ooh. Okay, let's go. So this photograph is the proof, correct? Indeed it is. And the man in the photo is certainly wearing a mask. That is why I'm called Mask de Mask. But conveniently, that also means that there is no way to tell who this really is. What do you mean? Objection. Huh. You're saying that this is not in fact Luke Atchner. At me. That it could be an accomplice dressed up as Mask de Mask to create an alibi. Oh, what an interesting idea. Are you saying that I learned Wolf Luke had an accomplice? I don't, really. If Luke Atme was at KB Security during the murder, then the Masty Mask in this picture has to be a fake. Then there really was an accomplice. But right now, I have no idea who it is. Hmm, I don't have any idea right now, either. Baseless objections are just what this guy wants. There's gotta be another way, and I'm gonna find it. I think it's Ron, but he was at uh, KB Security, so there's no way to pin him to it, so I can't do that. I believe Adrian Andrews hired you at one point. That's right. That was over 20 days ago, if I'm not mistaken. You sent the calling card to Lolly Taylor 10 days before the heist. That would mean you sent out the card after you began your security watch. Indeed, there was no reason why I couldn't do both jobs at once. It was the perfect opportunity to steal my latest target. 
I see, you truly are evil, aren't you? Yes, evil is what I am. Hey Nick, isn't there something odd about this? Hmm? Detective Admi was always proud of his ace detective skills, right? But if the arm was stolen from Lolly Taylor while he was the only one watching it, he'd have no way to maintain his perfect ace detective persona. You know, that's true, it is kind of odd. The photograph contains no words, but in this case, one turned out to be my witness. Sir, by photograph, you mean this piece of evidence here. Yes, is correct. Indeed it is, that is it. The very thing that proves I committed the crime. The very thing that proves you committed the crime. When you think about it, it's really odd. You say that almost as if you had the picture taken on purpose. He was simply caught by the very camera that he had set up. We all have days like that. Indeed, it turned out that there was no such thing. There was no such thing as the perfect crime after all. Life is truly an ironic thing. A sad blue melody. Looks like I'd better gather more information. If he's truly the killer, there's gotta be something further in this photo. Time which the camera captured Masty Mars at the same time as the murder. About the camera that took the photograph. Oh, come now, it's all too clear what you're thinking. Huh? You think I altered the timestamp on this photograph, don't you? I'm afraid that's impossible. The camera was set up by Lordly Taylor, and on top of that, it was Lordly Taylor's staff that printed that picture's data. Fortunately for the defense, there's no way that picture could have been altered. I see. Looks like I'd better find something that could be suspicious. So this alibi is false? Has to be, or he couldn't have killed the yeah, I've already read this, okay. So by photograph, you mean this piece of evidence here. Is that correct? Indeed it is, that is it. The very thing that proves I committed the crime. The very thing that proves you committed the crime. Surely even you understand by now. All the Taylor provided that camera, there's no way I could have tampered with it. That means I could not have killed Kane Bullard, unless I had accomplice. Hmm. Come on. Think long and hard about that night. The basement warehouse in this picture supposedly captures it. It's got to be here. Isn't there something funny about this picture? You bet there is. You implying that this picture's a fake? You bet I am. There's definitely something strange about this picture. We took a long we took a look around the basement warehouse that night before the theft took place. And there's something in this photo that doesn't match my memory of that night. The statue should be on top of the paint. Very well, then let's hear what you have to say. How about this photograph do you think is funny? Take that! The funny part is right here. Why this this is a blood stain! Ah, oh, blood. Now this case is getting interesting. Uh, not exactly. The stain is actually pink paint. Oh, just paint. I am peach colored at that. From blood to peaches, that judge sure loves going on his wild tangents. <laughs> the problem with this photograph is not the paint. The problem is when you consider the layout of the basement warehouse. It turns out that something that should be there is nowhere to be seen. Well, Mr. Wright? What is supposed to be in this picture instead of the paint? The supervisor of the treasure exhibit stated the following. Well, there is a good reason for that. On the day of the crime around noon, that gold statue just happened to arrive from the mountain training hall. I realized that the statue would be the perfect size for covering up the paint stains. That's why I put it where you first saw it. I myself was there the night the theft took place saw the statue in that spot. If the plate, if the picture was truly taken on that night, then that statue should have been there. But when I went there in the day after the theft, the statue of the old bag was sitting in the corner. Perhaps it was somehow pushed there accidentally. Your Honor, this statue is slightly larger than yourself and quite heavy. It would take more than an accidental push to move at that distance. Huh. In that case, can you prove it? Can you give us the rhyme and reason as to why the statue was moved that night? Can you do it, Nick? Never mind who moved it, the real question is why did they move it? Well, Mr. Wright, I hope you are prepared with your answer. Now then, 
Who was the one that moved the gold statue on the night of the crime? It was you! The one who moved the statue was none other than Look at me. Come now, sir lawyer. There you go again on one of your strange delusions. Mr. Wright, what basis do you have for your strange delusions? It's very simple. The witness was the only one in the basement warehouse that night. It is indeed very simple. However, why would I want to move a heavy gold statue? The reason for moving the gold statue, here's what our battle really begins. Well, Mr. Wright, what reason did the witness have to move the statue? The reason can be found here in this photograph. Look at me, you pretended to be Demasty Mask, to create an alibi by showing you were a lordly tailor that night. But this photograph contains a single fatal flaw. If the statue had been there, your lie would be exposed like cheap film at a drugstore. That is why you moved the statue. Single fatal flaw? Interesting theory. Please enlighten us. Just where in this picture does the lie exist? Timestamp, isn't it? Naturally, the lie in this photo was the timestamp. What do you mean? I'll tell you exactly what I mean. On the night in question, Luke Adney went to KV security. Therefore, it's obvious. It would have been impossible for him to have been at the Lordly Taylor at this time. What does that have to do with the statue being moved? Remember, if you will, Your Honor. When was this statue placed beside the warehouse door? Well, the statue was taken down to the warehouse on the day of the crime. And it was placed there in order to cover up the paint. Exactly. Luke Admi had already decided on the time when he was going to kill the victim. And so in order to create an alibi for that time, he took this picture days before the murders were place. But what the? Of course, the statue hadn't yet been brought down to the basement warehouse yet. Oh. So on the day of the crime, Mr. Abney must have been quite nervous. As nervous as a long-tailed cat in a rocking chair factory, so to speak. Why? Because something that wasn't supposed to be there had been brought down and placed where it wasn't supposed to be. And that is why Luke Abney had to move the statue on the night of the murder. He did it to make the room match with the way it had been on the photo. Mr. Admi, is this true? One moment, Your Honor. Uh, have you forgotten this? What's that? The data for the basement warehouse computer. According to this, the camera did indeed go off on the night of the crime. Hmm, it's true that the camera had been set up by the Lordly Taylor staff. However, the program used to manage that data was yours. That alone would have allowed you to tamper with the data. It's very true. Order, order, Mr. Carter, what is the meaning of this? What number coffee is this now? Carter, I warned you about making me wait. Now put the coffee down. My eleventh cup, okay. I've promised to drink no more than seventeen during a trial. Which means I'm still good to the last drop. Ah, oh, but the defense has a very good point. A good point? So what? We are all but travelers on a road of infinite points. Um, I think you got your points mixed up with your other points. <laughs> so you say this photograph was taken ahead of time, and that the statue was made, moved in order to make it match. It's a very interesting idea, however, there's one point that can't be denied. Which is? Then it's only a possibility. Men that are trapped by the chains of maybe can never reach their dreams. That's very true. No way, don't fall for that, Your Honor. Hey, Mr. Demask. Yes? If there's no funny business in your actions as Mask Demask, there should be no problem with you telling us your strategy. So let's hear it. Yes, please provide this call with your testimony about your plan to steal the sacred urn. I first received the request from Lordly Taylor about 20 days ago. 
The urn was placed in a box in Zavari. It was then sent to the warehouse. Hence, I was actually unable to see the urn for myself until the day of the crime. I knew it was an extremely valuable treasure, so I sent my card ten days beforehand. And then I hand and then hand I then handled security by myself to ensure that my crime would go smoothly. At last, I held the urn in my hands for the first time at 1 a.m. on October 12th. That's pretty much all the stuff we've heard before, isn't it? Yeah, but we'll find the truth hidden in the nuggets of new information he gave. Witness, you're sure there are no mistakes this time? Savari. Very well then, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Mr. Atme, if you really are Mask de Mask, then you also wrote this calling card, correct? But of course. Is there a problem with that calling card? Allow me to read a passage from the calling card that Mask de Mask had written. Take good care of the speckled urn. Now that's... The, now the speckled, huh? Surely refers to the pink pattern on the sacred urn? Yes, that is true, but so what? Truth be told, there is no way that Mask de Mask could have known about this pattern. What do you mean? This pink spotted pattern on the urn is actually nothing more than paint stains. Paint stains? And these stains did not appear. Until after the urn had been taken to Lordly Taylor. I'm not finding this joke to be very funny, Mr. Trite. The day that the secret sacred urn was taken to the warehouse. The urn was broken due to human error. Or should I say an error prone human? <laughs> And that's when the pink paint got onto the urn. You, you can't be serious. And yet this calling card clearly mentions the paint pattern. Which means Detective Admi Admi has been had seen this urn long before the crime ever took place. In fact, he saw it when this fake photo was taken. And because this photo was a fake, your alibi for the night of the murder no longer holds water. Witness, do you have anything to say for yourself? Ugh. All right, that did it. He's broken. Um, Nick, I think it's still a little early for a victory pose. Huh? <laughs> Thirteenth cup already, I think. Huh? It's so sad. No one has any conviction these days. Conviction, you say? Yesterday, we all decided unanimously that this man was Mask Demask, and now we're calling him a murderer. You don't think we're being a tad fickle? That's a good point. No way, don't fall for that too, Your Honor. You say that Luke Atme was the one who killed Cain Bullard. And let me ask you this. Why would he do that? An excellent point. Motive, Mr. Wright. Motive. Might you... Might you my merry murderous motive manifest? He's getting his second wind. If he prepared an alibi and pinned his crime on Ronda Light, as you say, he must have had a very strong motive for murder. The only one with any motive we've seen is Ronda Light. Isn't that right, Detective? Indeed, according to my own research, the boy's motive is clear. Without a motive, it's, ne it's nearly impossible to prove guilt in a murder case. Now then, maybe you can enlighten us to what the defendant's motives are. Thank you, Sir Oldtimer. They're doing everything they can to make Ron look suspicious. Despite our lack of hard information, this may be our only chance. I, Luke Atme, had no points of contact with the victim whatsoever. Kane Buller decided to investigate Masty Mask and simply mistook who he was. It was Mr. Bullard who wrote the blackmail letter and sent it to Ron Delight. It was... And it was again Mr. Bullard who harbored a grudge against Mr. Delight for his betrayal. Mr. Bullard's mistake is quite excusable. The defendant truly believes he is mask de mask. That is why Mr. Delight saw it fur fit to kill Cain Bullard. Truly a, st a tragedy. Well, yeah, it is a tragedy, but you're lying through your teeth. You do realize that, right? So the victim, Cain Bullard, blackmailed the defendant. 
This is the blackmail letter found in the defendant's apartment. A handwriting test confirms that Mr. Ballard was indeed the one who wrote the letter. What? Blackmail letter updated in the court record. Very well, Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. I look at me at no points of contact with the victim whatsoever. Can't deny that. Um, I can't... Yeah, I can't deny that. Kane Bullard decided to investigate Masty Mars and simply mistook who it was. It was Mr. Bullard who wrote the blackmail letter and sent it to Ron Delight. How do you know about that, though? Mind if I ask you a few questions, Detective Abney? Well, if it's just a few, I guess it's alright. When you said that this letter was addressed to Ron Delight, I couldn't help but notice one major contradiction. Contradiction? I don't know where a walking contradiction like you gets off saying things like that. You're the one to talk! In times like these, men are made to express themselves with their fists. Why don't you show us what you've got there, Junior? Indeed, time to man up, Mr. Wright. Show us the contradiction evidence in the content of the blackmailing letter. Um, it was this, wasn't it? Take a good look at this newspaper clipping. It contains a picture of the Tear of Aminon, the stolen jewel. What about it? The problem is the jewel's colour. Colour? I'm not much for discussing colour myself. According to the clipping, the colour of the stolen jewel was blue. However, in the blackmail letter, a totally different jewel is mentioned. I'll take that red diamond you received the other day. Which means, the red diamond described in the blackmail letter is not the tear of Ammon on the mask, the mask the mask stole it all. It was actually addressed to at me, I knew it! And your point is, Mr. Trite, so you're trying to say that this blackmail letter was intended for someone else. That is what you're trying to say, right? That is what you're trying to say, right, Mr. Wright? Well, that is what you're trying to say, right, Nick? Yes. Yes, all three of you. This is who Kane Bula was actually blackmailing. It's always going to be you, Admi. Naturally, it was you, Detective Admi. Do you have some sort of basis for that claim? You have been personally involved in every single Masty Mask case. And in the last case, you recover what was stolen and received a jewel as your reward. A jewel? Probably the one wrapped as conspicuously around your finger. The red diamond ring. That is the diamond referred to in the letter, which means that Kane Bullard wrote that letter in order to blackmail you. Order! Order in the court! Um, object! Order, I say. Sorry. It seems you've gone too far with your childish pranks, Mr. Trite. Uh-oh. I don't like the way he said that. Kane Bullard blackmail and look at me. Are you for real? Yes, I do. Nick, come on, stand up to him. Then answer me this. The blackmail letter contains the fo following. If you don't want your identity revealed to the world. Yes, it certainly does. Kane Bula threatened to make Lugami's identity public knowledge. As I an identity he wanted to keep secret. So just what was that identity? Abney killed Kane Bula because he was afraid of his secret being known. What was the identity he wanted to keep secret? This is what it all comes down to, Nick. The identity that Luke Abney wanted to so desperately keep secret was his identity as... A blackmailer. Luke at me was a blackmailer. Objection. Hey now. Uh, you're an old star. Get your game on. Don't play. Go play, I mean. Is that a little different from what you've been saying? You said that Kane Bula was the one blackmailing Luke at me. Are you saying that at me was blackmailing someone else on top of that? Whew. I have to admit, that does sound a little odd. It's not odd, it's the only thing that makes any sense. Kane Bula was blackmailing Luke at me. But Ron Delight was also being blackmailed by a certain someone. So did you start to receive blackmail letters starting after the incident? Yes, just a few days after the Tear of Aminon heist. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. I received plans from some very, some very kind person. Incredibly detailed plans. 
detail? In which case, that would mean that Ronda Light was actually Mossy Mosque. That is what we are claiming. Someone else came up with the plans and had Mr. Delight steal his targets from him. And that someone was none other than Luke at me. Silence. <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. What is? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year, careless with the tendency to jump to conclusions. Am I wrong? How did you? And you say that I, Luke Atme, was blackmailing Ron Delight. In which case, I would naturally know all about his relation to Master Mask. Well, Ron Delight started receiving plans from his second crime onwards, correct? Which means I learned of his identity when he committed that first crime. You certainly couldn't have blackmailed him otherwise. In that case, let's see some hot data evidence. During the first crime, how did Luke at me know that Ron Delight was Mask de Mask? Um, it's in the newspaper clipping, isn't it? I think I see it. See what? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Gets into lots of mischief trying to be the center of attention. What do you mean? This newspaper clipping. It has a picture of you and Ron Delight in his guard uniform. It seems that Master Mars didn't just appear into the air. He just took off his outfit and hid in a bucket. That sounds far stupid to be true. Correct, with the tricks like that, he couldn't fool a baby, let alone an ace detective. And that's when you figured it out, Mr. Attorney. That's when you learned that under his mask, Masty Mask was really Ron Delight. What the? Wasn't he supposed to be Masty Mask? Not only that, it looks like he wasn't even an ace detective. Can't believe it, he was just a slimy blackmailer. What a fraud trying to pass himself off as an ace detective. Why you? Dare you expose me like that? Why, I i mean, I've never blackmailed anyone in my life. A famous and proud ace detective and also Masty Mask. Why can't you understand that? I'm afraid you are neither a proud thief nor an ace detective. You're a blackmailer and a murderer. That is your true identity. Why, you? How dare you even dare to Oh my god. <laughs> it's enough to make one laugh. Yeah, I can't even just keep up with that. And they made it worse by putting the words together. <laughs> it would seem we've finally gone to the real answer. That was quite a performance, Mr. Atomy. Balif, please prepare a cell for Mr. Atomy. I knew it. The hammer that strikes too fast has no time to aim. What do you mean? I'm already prepared to deliver my sentence. Allow me to say one thing. I will be the one to judge. You don't get much more in your face than that. It appears that your claws weren't quite as sharp enough, Mr. Trite. Where do you? It's true that you've proven a lot of things. Things like Loot Atomy was a filthy blackmailer and that he wasn't a lordly tailor the night of the murder. That's right, that's why he's the one who killed him. But... There's still one thing you have yet to prove. What's that? Just because he wasn't at the warehouse doesn't mean he was at the murder scene. Therefore, if you can't prove that this pitiful excuse for a man was at KB security, then I don't see a verdict can be delivered. Well, aren't you being a bitch? Order! Order in the court! Or oh, Mr. Wright? This is it. This is the final round. I've got to prove that Atme was at Mr. Ballard's office that night. But can you really prove it? That's long enough, Mr. Trite. I want to hear your answer. That night, Luke Atme was at KB Security in the defense. I can't prove it. There was no evidence that he was there. I can't prove it. Just as I thought. But if we hear more of Detective Atme's testimony... Objection. Fortunately, that's as far as I can you can go, Mr. Trite. What do you mean? 
I want I won't allow for any more testimony. That's what I want. That's what I mean. What? Have you forgotten? Luke Abney is here after we inter interrupted his own trial. And you have failed to prove that he committed the murder. I think it's time for this witness to return to his own trial. And face his guilty verdict as mask de mask. No. Oh well, now, sir lawyer, it seems that love wins out in the end after all. I'm the ace detective as well as Mask de Mask. My verdict will verify that. Just as Ron's delight will verify that he is the true murderer. I declare that with the full force of my ace detectiveness. <coughs> That's enough deliberation over this witness. Can't believe this at this rate. Don't give up now, Nick. We still have tomorrow. We can look for more evidence and... Well, then it'll be too late. Huh? Why? Double Jeopardy. One of the basic rules of any court of law. Double Jeopardy? Should a defendant be tried and found innocent in court, the defendant cannot be tried again for the same crime. This is a fundamental rule of all courts. And it applies to this witness as much as it applies to anyone else. Mr. Atman will be found guilty in a matter of minutes. Guilty is masky mask, which means you will be innocent as far as the murder of Kane Bullard is concerned. The fact that you are unable to prove Mr. Atme's guilt of that crime here means that he will never again be tried as Kane Bullard's murderer. Now, there's nothing I can possibly do to win, even if Ron is proclaimed to be innocent. The real killer, Luke Abney, will go free. We will cross-examine every statement the witness has made here today, and as long as there is no more testimony, I'm afraid I have to declare that there will be no further questioning of this witness. Is there any objections? Now hereby end the cross-examination of Luke at me. Objection! Oh? Desi, I think I see it. Your Honor, when you were a child, this is what was on your report card every year. Has poor hearing and often makes mistakes as a result. How did you? Phoenix, raise your head up high. Have you forgotten what I used to tell you? Mia, a lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how hard, how bad it gets. Th that voice? No way. Yes! Long time no see, Phoenix. Mia! This is the true power of the Korean channeling technique. I know that it's really Mia who's standing before me, but right now she's my mentor, Mia Faye. Now let's do this. But there's nothing more we can do, Mia. I need more testimony I can't cross examine. Not yet, the testimony's not moving yet. What do you mean? Your Honor, just now you said something very interesting. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. Yes, that's true, but... Unfortunately, Your Honor, you're forgetting something. Earlier, after the last cross-examination, this witness made a number of remarks. Well now, Sir Lawyer, it seems that love wins out in the end after all. I am the ace detective, as well as Master Mask. My verdict will prove that. Just as Ron Delights will verify that he is the true murderer, I declare that with the full force of my ace detectiveness. Y yes but these comments appear to have no importance whatsoever. Very well, then we shall prove their importance via cross-examination. At any rate, as long as the witness has made these remarks, we the defense assert our right to question them. Is that alright with you, prosecutor? Is something the matter, Mr. Gatto? Ah, uh, nothing. Oh, Sir Lawyer, looks like you're one step too late. If you think such falsehoods would do anything to me, look at. Let's hear it. Huh? It's true that the witness made some remarks. So then, let's hear the last bit of cross examination. Mr. Gotto, what are you. Very well, look at me. I'll allow the defense to cross examine your earlier remarks. The defense would like to hear why you declare the defendant to be the true murderer. So please, give us one last bit of testimony. I, uh. Phoenix, this is it. This is our, our absolute last chance. Yes, Chief.
Indeed, it is true that I was not a lovely tailor. I had to leave to see about another vital important job request. I had known about the date beforehand, so I had this photograph re um, ready. My brilliant introduction was one who informed me that the true culprit was Ron, Ron Delight. And thanks to the keycard and wallet, it was abundantly clear that he was there. I was also able to make a deduction from the buzzer which only sounded once. The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? The victim would have left for prints if he sounded it, which means the killer sounded it. Mr. Delight was wearing his Masty Mask outfit, which is why he left no prints. And the blackmail letter? The victim likely just mistook the color for the jewel. Zavari. Therefore, all the evidence points to that poor baby. The testimony actually seems to hold up pretty well. The witness's earlier remarks do not appear to have been harshly prepared. All of these points have been explained and none of them seem to contradict anything. But of course. But how did you know about the emergency buzzer? The police investigation documents went directly through me. And I always look all over the documents. It's elementary, sir lawyer. Are you going to make even more trouble for us now, sir lawyer? I will not allow any of your usual shenanigans, Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. We cannot postpone Luke Adamy's trial any longer. This is your last chance. Hang on a sec, just one chance? It seems that the party's about to peak here. Well, Phoenix, there isn't any evidence that contradicts with the testimony. So it would seem. Well, what do you mean, so it would seem? Listen, Phoenix. Listen to your mentor. Yeah, good, my mic's working, I think. Pointing out contradictions doesn't always mean you have to present evidence. At any rate, this is our last chance. If you can't point oh sorry. If you can't point out a case breaking contradiction, you lose. That's all there is to it. Cup number seventeen, the last cup. Seems that the time has come to put an end to this trial. Finally, the 17 cups of coffee. I have to find fatal contradiction in this testimony. And I need to point it out without presenting evidence. Which means all I can do to find the contradiction, remark and press it. It's to remark and press it, sorry. Remember, you only get one chance. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Please begin your final cross-examination. Indeed, it is true that I was not at Lordly Taylor. I had to leave to see about another vital and important job quest. I had known about the date beforehand, so I had the photograph ready. My brilliant deduction was what informed me that the true culprit was Ryan Delight. And thanks to the keycard and wallet, it was abundantly clear that it was there. I was also able to make a deduction from the buzzer, which only sounded once. The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? The victim would have left prints if he sounded it which means the killer sounded it. Mr. Delight was wearing his mask, um, outfit, which is why he left no prints. Yeah. Mr. Turn- uh, Mr. Admi, about this last Objection. remark. You still don't get it, do you, Trat? This isn't the time to be pressing the witness on every little statement. I'm afraid you're the one who still doesn't get it, Mr. Gatto. What? Mr. Atme, it seems you have finally admitted that you were in the CEO's office on the night of the murder. How can you say that? Let's review your testimony, shall we, Mr. Atme? The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? Mr. Delight was wearing his mask, Mitty Mask outfit. How did he know that? Indeed, that's what I said. My deductions are absolutely foolproof. More like your deductions prove that you're a fool. Oh, I'm sorry? Whatever do you mean? For some reason I'm starting to get really thirsty. When exactly did you learn the fact that Ron Delight was dressed as Masked Mask when he went back to the scene of the crime? That, that was, um... It was just a few hours ago. Back when my sixth cop was looking at me with a cold stare. Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention that before? I'm sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. He never heard about it. That's right, the defendant had yet to tell anyone else this fact before this morning. 
Therefore, the only people who should know about this, um, and this, are those who have been watching this trial. <sighs> Do you understand now, Detective Admi? There's no way that you should have known about that. Yeah! <laughs> You're in the next courtroom being tried as Mask Demask. So then enlighten us, just how did you know about that piece of information? Well... Come on, the detective must have known about it. He probably had plenty of chances to find out beforehand. And it's those chances that I want to discuss next. That next, Mr. Delight was wearing his Masty Mask outfit. There is one and only one way for Detective Atme to have found that out. Only one? One way, you say? Please remember, if you will, Mr. Delight's testimony. When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. For a second, my client witnessed the real killer. Mr. Delight never saw him. There's no way to tell whether or not the real killer was Luke at me. It's with that statement that I'll turn this case on its head. J just what are you saying? Mr. Delight saw the real killer, correct? Now, if you turn that statement around, it stands to follow the real killer had also seen Ron Delight. Uh, impossible. <laughs> Detective Admi, you saw Mask Demask at the murder scene. You saw him when you killed Kane Bullard and assaulted Ron Delight. That was the only way you could have known what Ron was wearing. What the hell? <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. That's the same line you gave yesterday. But, I think there's a little more meaning behind it this time. <laughs> I don't even want it to laugh. I'm not up to it. I just came back from the gym. I had to pause the video. Uh, what an awfully complicated incident. Kane Buller was blackmailing Luke Atme, who was in turn blackmailing Ron Delight. And upon killing his blackmailer, Luke Atme tried to frame Ron Delight. He then claimed to be guilty as Mask de Mask in order to escape his true crime. And to that end, he came up with his plan to use this double jeopardy rule when making an alibi. Um, at any rate, it would seem we've finally found the truth. Excuse me? I came perilously close to burst matching the record of an innocent young man. Burst matching him with the title of murderer. Don't ignore me! Oh, I didn't realize you were there. Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he be? Um, about the verdict... I know. You never committed any murder. That's right, I'm so glad you understand that. I am... I really am Mask to Mask! Huh? So thanks to that trial yesterday, I'm innocent now, right? Was it you said? Double Jeopardy? Now that you mention it, I've been careless. Careless? Um, what do you think, Mia? As the defendant says, the rule of Double Jeopardy is absolute. A defendant can never be tried twice for a crime in which he was once found innocent. Then Masty Mask is really innocent? For now. It would seem so. For, for now? Now then, the court finds the defendant. Not. Guilty! Boy, this is really lucky. Wait, uh, I... That isn't good after all. You see, the thing is, I still am Masty Mask after all. He doesn't get noticed. <laughs> I love it. Defendant Lobby number four. You did it, Nick! Thanks, Mia. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because Mia doesn't call on me much these days. Uh oh? I'm just joking, Phoenix. Don't take everything so seriously. On the other hand, Mia, she seems kind of lost these days. You mean about becoming the master of the Korean channeling school? Becoming the master means every saying goodbye to a mother. You ain't Misty Fay. Watch over her, will you, Phoenix? Of course! Well then, see you around. Mia, 
Uh, Mr. Wright, um, I, uh, I, I don't know what to say. Congratulations, Mr. Delight. Thank you so much! Uh, no, wait, nothing really matters anymore, though. Now that all this has happened. Come on, just be happy already! Mayor, you've been cleared of the murder charges and got off his nasty mask to boot. But in exchange, I lost everything. Huh? What do you mean? Stealing security information from KP Security, make becoming Masty Mask? I did it all for one reason, for her. You mean your wife, Desiree? Desiree. She hates criminals more than anything. Come to think of it, she was once held hostage by some robbers, wasn't she? She always said how she hated sneaky criminals. I know that. I knew, I knew that. I knew that, but... Once I got fired from KP Security and lost all the money I had, she wouldn't have any reason to stay with me. I thought she would leave me for sure. So that's why you became Masky Mask. Yes, but it's all over now. Broken Ball can never be put back together. Th that's not true, right, Nick? Right? But really, can we go back to where the things were? You'll be fine, and Nick can change it. We can. I kind of wish you would check with me first. Mr. Delight, even if a ball is broken, there is always a way to put it back together. Like we did with this! The Sacred Urn. Desi was the one who found this. Des um, Desiree, your wife, she's always beloved in you. Believed in you, Ron. That's why you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about anything. Ah, there you are. Mr. Light. You did it, Ronnie. You're innocent. Th thank you. I, I appreciate it. But, um, I suppose you don't want anything more to do with me, do you? Ronnie, why didn't you talk to me about what was going on? I had no idea you'd quit at KB Security. I never imagined that you were really Masty Mask either. Mr. Light, what are you going to do now that you know? You're not going to really leave him, are you? Come on, it's obvious, isn't it? How could I ever let a wonderful man like him get away? After all, my bike's really fast. So far that there's no way he could ever get away. Um, but didn't you say that you hated criminals? Hmm? Oh, I only hate people who act all cowardly and sneaky. Like that detective. I see. My Ronnie went and declared his crimes before he committed them like a man. I just love a man who's so chivalry. Chivalrous. Chivalrous? I knew I was right about you. Every day I spend with you is filled with thrills and excitement. Des Tessie. Desiree, you really do love Ron, don't you? Nicky boy. Y yes? I'm really glad I asked you to defend Ronnie. Thank you so much. I'll never forget what you've done for us. Oh, well, um... Take care of yourself. You do, Nicky boy. Ugh. I can feel my face going red. Oh no! <laughs> Talk about bad timing. I knew it! With another man's wife in front of Mystic Mayor! No, 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 you got it all wrong. I'll never forgive you! Never, ever! Fucking hell! I should have seen that. So just as the case came to a close, so did t so too did my consciousness. Ron said a broken ball can never be put together, put back together. But I know that's not true. <laughs> just look. He's a perfect example of one that was put back together, even better than before. That picture is awesome. The fan art for this game is amazing. Recipe for turnabout. Yes, I'm saving. Let's check out the picture for the other one. Gotto is awesome! Look at Gotto! I wish he had his coffee cup. That would be fabulous. Just the coffee cup. It would be awesome. But yeah, that was episode 2. Soul and the turnabout. Let's head on to the recipe for turnabout. See you next time. Mm -hmm.